Smoking is an issue that most people have strong beliefs towards, either for or against. It may be logical to assume that most people who smoke must have a more positive attitude towards smoking. But if you think about it, it's more complex than that, isn't it? I mean, it's possible for someone to have a negative attitude towards smoking, but still be a smoker themselves. In this lesson, we're going to explore what attitudes are in psychology and why they sometimes totally don't match a person's behavior. First, some definitions. An attitude in psychology is a learned, stable, and lasting evaluation of a person, object, event, or idea that can affect someone's behavior. Of course, there are attitudes that we are aware of, which we call explicit attitudes, but also attitudes that we may not be aware of, called implicit attitudes. Either way, both have an effect on our behavior. Now, it's worth saying that attitudes aren't inherently bad. I mean, without them, it would take much more time and effort to make decisions, process information, or stand up for our values and beliefs. For example, the attitude that exercise is important is more likely to influence your behavior towards healthy living. But does an attitude always convert into a behavior? Well, if the facts and the situation align with your attitude, then yes, it'll be far more likely to be expressed in your behavior. But does an attitude always convert into a behavior? Well, if the facts and the situation align with your attitude, then yes, it'll be far more likely to be expressed in your behavior. We call this attitude specificity. For example, if you support a certain team and you're amongst friends who do as well, it's easy to express that attitude in your behavior. I mean, no one's gonna make fun of you for that. On the flip side though, your attitude about exercise being good may be harder to express if you've tried healthy eating for three days and it didn't seem to pay off. <clears throat> Not speaking from experience at all, of course. But yeah, you know, all of a sudden, those donuts are looking real good. And before you know it, they're in my belly. I mean, you know, the hypothetical person's belly. Psychologists are really interested in moments like these because acting in a way that contradicts your beliefs is something that's quite uniquely human to do. A robot would not be able to go against its programming unless, I guess, it was programmed to do so. But you get what I mean. We humans are complicated. This contradiction is known in psychology as cognitive dissonance, that discomfort felt when there's a discrepancy between a person's attitude and their behavior. It's that feeling when you're telling a lie and you know that you should be honest. The dissonance is uncomfortable and people go to considerable efforts to try and justify what they did. You might say that, well, you know, it's, it's better that you lied instead of hurting your friend. And so, you know, you're still being a good, honest person and not really going against your beliefs. In his 1964 book, When Prophecy Fails, Festinger, the guy who came up with the theory of cognitive dissonance, observed members of a cult who, amongst other things, believed that the world was soon going to be destroyed by a flood. Of course, the biblical account said that Noah's flood would never happen again, but that clearly wasn't relevant here. When the flood, well, didn't occur, the researchers observed how the members responded. They noticed that members who weren't as committed were more likely to recognize that they had been foolish and tricked by the cult. But some who had fully committed to it, like leaving their jobs and selling the houses, were far more likely to reinterpret the evidence and say that it was because of their faithfulness that the flood was prevented. In the first case, cognitive dissonance caused people to change their attitudes. In the second case, cognitive dissonance caused people to justify their behavior. Their attitude didn't change one bit. While there are criticisms of this study, including neglecting many other possible contributing factors, Festinger and the researchers concluded that the more invested someone is, the less likely cognitive dissonance will cause them to rethink their underlying attitude. They'll simply come up with ways to justify or perhaps change their behavior. This flowchart summarizes the process. If a person acts in a way that's consistent with their beliefs, there's no internal tension and therefore no discomfort. But if there's cognitive dissonance, a person might ease the tension by changing their attitude, changing their behavior, or finding a way to justify the contradiction between the attitude and behavior, especially if they're really invested in it. Cognitive dissonance happens to all of us because no one is totally consistent with their attitudes and behavior. The question is, when is it the time to hold to your beliefs and not be swayed by the results? And when is the time to realize that maybe it's your attitudes that were wrong in the first place and change them for the better? Doing so will require courage, but you're the only one who can do it.